Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Yet another piece of the vintage paper. I think I like doing these right here just as a contrast to uh, the really loud <clears throat> metallics and foils that I've been using, which I really love using, but um, they're kind of on the other side of the spectrum from the uh, kind of the more subdued um, look that I think is really conducive to this uh, type of pre-printed vintage paper. After all, I mean, it's vintage looking. It's supposed to look aged and kind of weathered. Uh, and that's kind of in contrast to a very reflective, ever-changing uh, color scheme style of foil. That's, again, very exciting to work on. Um, but I don't know, this is just like a different look for me. Um, I really like the uh, kind of the spirit of it. Okay, so I'm I'm looking for <clears throat> some different options on how to utilize this paper and to really I don't know about maximizing it, but just to give it you know variation and uh, um, variety in how it can be utilized, at least as far as uh, my use goes. Um, in scenes. All right, so that was the old mill, large. I haven't used that too much, but I thought it'd be perfect for this paper. And in the wilderness, I sense a miracle of life, and behind it, our scientific accomplishments fade to trivia. Um, I don't know, I felt that uh, this saying here it goes really well with the spirit of this paper. It feels, um, I don't know, kind of older. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of reflective, I guess. All right, so I'm going to add in this little fisherman down here. He kind of puts the, uh, I don't know, the, uh, the quote into um, kind of a... I don't know, the spirit of this, uh, let's say they're a fly fisherman. Right down there, see that like that? I think that makes for a pretty good composition. All right, now on the top, I think I do want something else. Um, I have these pine bows um, that I can use in there. I don't know, I just happen to have the uh, the leaf stamp out though. Maybe I'll just go for this one again. There's something to be said for these pre-printed papers, isn't it? Isn't there? <laughs> it is, you can come up with a really, really quick card. Um, like, I don't know, like five minutes if you really want to and just be done with it. I'll, I'll add in some extra um, I don't know, whatever elements into it, just to, you know, have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, not that just stamping alone isn't fun, but uh, there's definitely something to be said for adding your own kind of, uh, I don't know, mark into it with um, additional elements. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at my screen here, and uh, I think I can use a little bit of framing for this character in here or a little bit more than there is, so let's put some foreground around them just to frame them off a little bit better and to bring kind of some visual attention to them like that. There's little reeds down here. You don't see it too much because the, uh, the hard kind of darker vignette of this particular paper um, is down here, okay? But look at this, even this kind of this run through here. It looks kind of cool. Um, one of the things I haven't seen done in a long time, I need to get some of the paper. I think I had it in my, uh, my like, Amazon shopping cart at one time was some, um, the wood grain paper. It looks like wood, you know, like a, I don't know, whatever you call it, like a veneer or something like that. Um, but I never got around to getting that. Um, I should, I don't know, I should check it out sometime. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to check out too, I don't want to do like every one of these scenes exactly the same, but 
I just wanted to see what maybe a hint of a little bit of color would look like. In this one right here, it doesn't seem like I need to do any shading on anything, but I thought I would check and just see if this type of paper, if we could add a little hint of, you know, a little bit of a different hue in here. So I'm just adding a little bit of this very, very light green, and I'm adding the light green with a very light touch, so it's already very light in tone, but I'm adding it just very lightly as well. Don't do it like that, okay? So it's like, you just touch it down to the paper and, you know, let your, I don't know, uh, repetition um, add just a little bit of color down where when you go over it several times, it's like you might achieve like, a, I don't know, like a 10% version of this or something like that. But see, see a little tone in there. I think that looks, you know, not too bad. It's really, really subtle. And this is one of my favorite blues right here. Let me see if I can use a little bit of blue. Now we have all this tone down here, but like I always say, I, I usually go into my pieces and add a little bit of a... Um, a base layer color in warm tones. That's kind of what's going on in here. It's except it's much more developed. So even when the base layer colors are a little bit or very warm in tone, you can still go over them um, with some additional color, like the opposite temperature range, and you can get um, Kind of a more glowing, rich version of a cool tone when it's layered over a warm tone. Okay, and that's what this vintage kind of paper is. You always see it in kind of warm, I don't know, like sepia or, uh, you know, the, the, that kind of range of colors, um, umber, you know. Okay, so, so right there, it's just a real subtle kind of real weathered looking um, blue, okay? All right, let's try a little bit of brown on here. Now, here's what I'm gonna recommend for something like this. I'm gonna go into the side of this mill and I'll really kind of reiterate the darker side of it. In this case, it happens to be this front area like this. I'm, again, this is, I don't know, like a medium tone brown. And I just added it on that side and I'll add it under the eaves on this side because this side is the illuminated side because it's lighter, okay? So we've added a little bit of tone to that, right? And it makes, I don't know, it makes the mill seem a little bit more, I guess, three-dimensional. All right, so we have uh, this one. Let's go with uh, this warm kind of beige color. Okay, it's out of my... Artistro um, 42 pack set, okay? You get a lot of different kind of pastel versions of different hue in here, which is good because this is like a kind of a lighter brown, right? And, okay, let's see if we can add some of this down and to give some of these objects a little bit more uh, dimension through highlighting. Now, this paper is pretty dark in here, but um, you can see where I'm adding it right now. I'm adding it on the tops of some of the rocks. Let's see if adding it to the top of this mill will illuminate that rooftop a little bit more. I think it does. Um, kind of brings it out from the background a little bit. I'm adding this on the top sides of my objects. I need to be careful a little bit in the darker areas because this stands out more by contrast against darkness, okay? And what I'm noticing is that this looks lighter than it, what it looks like when it's dry. In this case, that's a good thing. So it's absorbing into the paper um, as I add it in and I talk about it here, so. Um, what you see when first applying is not necessarily what you're going to get, okay? Maybe I didn't shake this up too much either, but you can see where things are a little bit more dimensional now. 
Let's add some little sparkly kind of, I don't know, wildflowers into the, uh, the grassy area too. Just kind of adds a little bit of texture or maybe a lot of texture. All right, let me shake this up a little bit too. In this case, I think it's good that it's not, um, you know, too light um, so far. <laughs> I'm adding some more, so we'll see. Okay, so right around in the water, I'll give it a little bit of sparkle. Um, I already have the kind of those concentric circles on the stamp, so I'm just kind of reiterating that down there. And I think that should be about it. I'll show you what this looks like, um, how all matted off. I have this other piece on here, but this is just a quarter page, so you can see what this would look like formatted in uh, kind of that gold and tan perimeter like that. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger, but roughly it'll look like that. I see like this a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know, this space, I don't know why I made it longer, I guess. But anyways, that's kind of the format there. So a real kind of weathered look. You could add in other things in here. I don't know, maybe like a fish or something like that would be cool. Birds in the background. Um, but otherwise, I don't know, what are we looking at here? This is like under 10 minutes, or under 12 minutes for this card. Yeah, you got a little bit of coloring there, a little bit of texture, and lighting. You get your quote stamp up there. You have three focal points. One, two, three. This guy is letting kind of shadow down here, so I think it, you know, someone would look in here and then go up there, and then they would circle around back down to this, so the visual path is like from here read, you know, and I think they go back down to this, right, this, something like that. All right, so anyways, hope you like it, thanks for watching, and I don't know, if you like these types of uh, really quick scenes, it doesn't have to be the vintage paper, go for any type of pattern paper and see what you can come up with. Um, the louder, you know, the background, kind of the more you have to kind of fill in um, to bring your images out from the background, but um, I don't know, there's all kinds of different papers out there to uh, play around with and experiment with. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comments section. If you like these videos and channel, please hit the like button. I really, really appreciate it.